I gotta be honest with you, there's a lot that Sony got right with this little thing, the ZV-1. Could you use it? Could I use it for my daily vlogging adventures? Of course, of course, there's some fun features in there. That 480p slow-mo, forget about it. <laughs> Amazing. But, would I say this was designed for vlogging? No, it has some very obvious flaws. I wrote a list. We'll talk about what I think the Mark II needs to be, once and for all, to have the perfect vlogging camera for all of us. For all of us, especially her. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I've had a chance to look at the footage from the last video. If you haven't seen it, streetcars exist and they ruin our lives. My initial impressions, it looked good. It killed the GoPro. I brought the GoPro again just because it was like a nighttime shot at minus one EV. I'm so sorry. I'm so used to shooting in this direct bright sunlight. So that's how my GoPro is always set up. So we'll test it again. Maybe it'll stand a chance. We also brought the idle cam and the Olympus. So we're gonna compare this first, a bunch of stuff today and talk about all the flaws. But initial impressions, fantastic. The straight out of camera standard profile was a little saturated, a little sharpened. So we're down one on some stuff. One contrast, saturation and sharpness down one. It's all right, ND filter is on today as well. But it exposes great, clear, it did decent in low light. Stabilization's usable, but it's that crop, which we're really extended. <laughs> I think she's drunk. It's only 1 p.m. I can't wait to test out the idle cam later on. It's gonna be great. I wish you could see it, but Sony doesn't allow that kind of thing. If only stabilization worked in this mode, that'd be the funnest thing ever. But this was designed for vlogging. Somehow he only has a 24 mil lens on this as well, but there's no crop because it has a gimbal. So we will compare them, my friend. All right, so let's talk about some features that I wish the Mark II had. I wish this already had it, but they didn't. This camera would be designed for vlogging with these features. You put everything in here, you got the perfect camera. And then we'll get into the comparisons later on. So the obvious, a 16 to 35 lens or a prime 16 if you have to. And it, I think it might even have to be 15 because your digital crop is quite heavy handed. I get what you're going for with the 24 mil. It does look more pleasing to the face as long as you extend it on this tripod I would not suggest you buy that little Sony grip though. That thing's too short. That thing should extend at least five times its current length. But like right here, 19 inches away from me, that's a decent field of view ruling of thirds so hard right now. But handheld, it's literally this. That ain't right. Get it on out there, that's obey. Obey? The hell happened to my mind? The second thing you need, better stabilization. Now this works pretty well. I gotta hand it to you. The stable, digital stabe, it corrects everything, but without it, it's embarrassing how bad it is. I couldn't believe it. Like there's optical stabilization in the lens, completely unusable, shakier than my GH5S. I bet you this is more stable. So I got a comment saying that even with the IBIS, People are noticing, locked off. I mean, oh God, I can't even speak English. Sony is known for their stabilization. They're king of the mountain with their boss system. It's in their camcorders. It's, they attach the sensor and the lens together and they move as one. Fantastic. So that has to be in your vlogging sensation camera. Stabilization is number one, even though it's number two on my list. It's number one in our hearts. You have to have it in there, and that has to be a focus. This is not even anything. Did he? Yeah, you're in the vlog, homie. You're in the vlog. <laughs> this is not, it's an afterthought. It's the worst stabilization I've ever seen. But right now with the digital, okay. So I'm looking for much better optical or IBIS or BOSS system plus a digital for freaky stable moonwalks. That's what you have to have. The third thing is actually a deal breaker. I'm shocked that this somehow passed the boardroom meeting. I just, let's just listen to the meeting. All right, fellas, the perfect vlogging machine's pretty much finished. Any final touches? I mean, it's pretty much good, boss. We got the 16 mil on the wide end, perfect stabilization, the autofocus. 
all our custom modes, S-Log, what else could we possibly add? Oh, we took out that lens. We're using the RX100 lens, the 24 to 70, and then we'll digitally crop it so we can focus more on the face. That's what vloggers want. Don't they want to show the world? Unfold before them? No, it's just the face now. They just want to see how much acne do you have? What are your thoughts thinking? And just look in this general direction. You'll be good for the vlogging. Okay, it, it sounds pretty much finished then. I, I guess just put in the tripod mount in its normal place, uninhibiting the battery door and we're good to go. Yeah, about that. I kind of prefer taking the tripod off. It's It gives my wrists a nice little workout, first of all. And then you get to put your tripod somewhere. That's fun. So in order to change the battery or get the SD card out, you have to remove the tripod? Yeah, it should save time. I think it's just adding time an unnecessary achievement. You worry too much. We got one of those tiny little Sony batteries. These things last forever. When's that thing gonna run out? Never, that's the answer. And if you wanna get your footage off, we got a micro USB port. So much better than USB-C. Let's plug that right in there. Charge it in camera. This is why people hate us, boss. That was a downright painful boardroom meeting. I'm kneeling right next to the sidewalk. People are looking at me like, what the hell is that guy doing? And one guy thought I was talking to him. No, it's just the face now. It's this. Sorry? If you have act, I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm talking to him because I'm looking this way. <laughs> so yeah, I can't believe the tripod mount is covering up the SD card and battery door. That's like basic stuff from years ago. I, I never thought any company would make the same mistake again. It was the Canon PowerShot cameras that were doing that. And we're like, oh man, that's so annoying. And then every camera since then has just been pushed it off to the side. And now we're back to square one. That needs to be on the opposite side next time because it's such a pain in the ass. Just think of it, this battery dies right now. I got to put this down, take the tripod off. And then like, where do I place the camera? I got to set that down somewhere. Is it going to sit and poo? Is it going to get scratched by the cement and then go into my bag, get the battery, oh, do all this stuff and then put it back on? Like, that's ridiculous. It should be a little flip, switch, boom, and bam, bam, boom. So that's absolutely unforgivable, but we'll move on. Easy switch custom modes. Right now, in order to get into 480p, the glorious thing I've ever seen in my life for slow-mo street mode classics. In order to get the glory that you just witnessed, it's not so bad. You gotta press the mode button, go up to high frame rate mode, enter, and then I think you're in, and then you can do it. But in the future, a camera designed for vlogging should have GoPro mode, just like one button press switches to a different custom profile. So I should have 4K, 24p here, and then maybe 120p with audio is the next mode, and then 480p, 960p, Oh, we got 960p. How do you think I got back on this side of the street? So just a function button, this could be added in a firmware update. Just a function button to switch between custom profiles. It makes life so much easier. I wish every camera had it. The Olympus, I finally figured out a life hack somewhat to get slow-mo and regular with just two little switches. Next obvious feature I would love is some 10-bit glory. We're still on the same old Sony profiles. 4K, 30p, 8-bit, 420. Same old stuff, it's hard to grade it. I'll try. Oh, demon luck. How are you? Not well? 
That's fine. I don't even need 4K 60p, but just upping the quality, upping the megabits, just so I can see some richness. Something that doesn't look so smartphone-ish. Up that quality, homie. A bigger battery would be nice, like a boss level battery that never dies. You could fit it, maybe. Not in this body, but it would be nice to have one of those Sony Z batteries in here. It's bigger than the actual camera, so I understand that's not gonna happen, but it'd be nice for a little bit better of a battery. My last suggestion before we move on to the comparisons, either, just take this with a grain of salt, but I kind of think this would work better in a camcorder style body. It's not too big, but it's much easier to hold that. The X3000, I just love that. You could hold it. The GoPro styles, it's this crab claw motion. It ain't natural. Camcorder, yes. I'd even put my hand in that strap. Take that. They're in the shot. They're Tone. Let's reveal them with this amazing feature. Did it do it? It was already Tone. You just take it away. Oh, thanks. So if it was a camcorder style body and a 16 mil lens, I could handhold it. Wouldn't need the tripod. Maybe I could fit it in the pocket, depending on your design. Maybe not, but still more comfortable to carry than all this. I don't technically mind this, this look right now. We got the chest and nipples in. Nipples in the shot. That was, I said that too loud. Let's just compare the cameras now. Honestly though, the more I use this camera, the more I love it. I love that slow motion so much. No other camera that I know of in this kind of price range and size does 480 frames per second. And it looks good enough. It looks good enough for my slow-mo street crossings, even the 960p. It looks okay. It's not great, but thank you so much for the fun factor. It's in there. All right, first things first. Did you notice an immediate drop in quality? We're on the GoPro. We're on the little GoPro. Now we're at no EV compensation, just as a little quick test to try to redeem itself. Because that was embarrassing. But still, I think the Sony will smack it anyway. Low light for sure, but stabilization is the only way GoPro really wins, is I leave my idle cam on a bench for a homeless man to steal. The one thing I love is just the wider view, and this is linear. We could go much wider, super wide, too wide, but this is where that one inch sensor comes into play. It's better. It's better than the little tiny smartphone sensor, so that's what we've been asking for. Sony X3000 upgraded with that one inch sensor. Imagine it. We thought that's what we were getting, but we weren't. We were not. But let's see if the idle cam can blow us all away. Just so you can see the size comparisons of what you have to carry to get that image quality a little better, it's a lot more. It's a lot more. Oh, little idle cam. Oh, wow. That's so much wider. You gotta bring it in there. It almost feels like I'm on a fisheye lens. Look at the wideness here. Look at that. We're on the same exact tripod, so it's the same distance from my body. And they're both 24 mil lenses. That's the shocker. The only thing is, this is on a gimbal, the idle cam, so it doesn't need digital stay, but I don't think it even has it. It doesn't need it. But the Sony probably looks a lot better. But you be the judge, my friend. What's more stable? If I'm walking, this gimbal's been pretty fantastic, I must say. It is superior to have the gimbal. It's the best of all worlds, but it's a tiny one. You don't even need to think. They're both roughly the same weight. It's just the idle cam's a little clunkier. It's a little awkward. It's kind of weird. But who handles the backlit and love situation better? It's tough to say. It looks like maybe Sony's doing it. Wow. And then <laughs> I notice when you turn on that idle cam, it doesn't turn so fast with you, but it's gloriously smooth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is this more pleasing with more to see? More stuff everywhere, birds flying everywhere, mountains off in the distance. Unbelievable. Or Sony. It's a little more personal. It's all about me. It's mostly me. But it does look better. It has the shallower depth of field. A little tone in your life. 
Now the real question, can the Sony compete with the Olympus Dream Camera, the Olympus EM1 3 with the Leica 12mm f1.24? Okay. Be careful now. We're witnessing glory befold before us. Who's handling their situation better? If they were trapped in a back alley, demanded to give their change up, their lunch money, who would give it up? It's the important times. Y'all have no idea the pain and the drama that surrounds my life. <laughs> ah, the Olympus. I recorded this whole thing in the park and somehow it switched to program auto mode on its own. It was in aperture priority and then when you hit record, it switches over. So I have this whole segment coming where it looks like it's at F91 and it just, it's not very cinematic, Sony wins, but this is the reality that faces us. I figured we gotta reshoot it just to give Olympus a little fighting chance here. Olympia boy for Sony. Mm. Sony is a little warmer on those colors. So let's do an autofocus test that's not an F15. We'll see who wins. Before we do that, let's just do a little stabilization test. Here's the Sony. Here's the little Olympia boy it's starting to rain. That's great. That's good for business. How did it handle that turn? Good times. Good times. Wow. First the Olympus, which does not have digital stabe on. Just regular stabe. We're using the mic from the Sony. Whirlwind action. There it is. Who handled that better? Let's get on to the autofocus test. super fair I stop down to like f5 what the equivalent is here Sony looks much better exposed, that is for sure. Although, exposure is subjective, as they say. I'm gonna go. I gotta be honest with you, that Olympus is a lot heavier. It's a lot noticeably heavier. I was used to carrying it before until I got this in my hands. Wasn't even in the shot because it's so tight. Both 12mm lenses, Olympus is wider. I turn the digital stabe off. Does it help? Oh, is it needed? Which is winning. Sony's exposing better, I think. I still have not figured out Olympus, I swear. I keep getting suggestions. Like, oh, just turn on this mode. Oh, spot focus metering and then you lock it and it'll fall. It doesn't. <laughs> not in movie mode. These photographers giving me advice. What the hell is that all about? They're photographers. They think babies come from rubbing candles together. They don't know a lot. They do not know a lot. Who handles our lives better? Bigger sensor over here. It should win. But is it? Does it matter? Does size actually matter? Both white balance auto on white priority, both of them. Who's doing that better? Which has greener grassy hills of Ireland? Who has more tonne? 
Are we even at 1.4? I doubt it. We're in cinema 4K probably. Just a bunch of bullshit in my life. That was a fully charged battery, Sony. Fully charged. And it died during this little test. I barely got halfway down the street. What the heck? We're on the Olympi boy. So, what do you think? I'm pretty impressed, honestly. It's nice. I don't say I'd recommend to buy it necessarily. If you had nothing and you're starting off as a YouTuber, you could do worse. You could do worse. It's good. It has the fun modes, product showing mode and the slow mo and decent enough stabilization. It's a little weird. Battery life I'm not too happy about. And you need a super long tripod, get the nebula down below. It's in my Amazon shop. Check it out. There's a bird. He's telling it. Olympus will show you. Olympus loves you. So, I think we're done. What do you think? Who won the battles today? Idle Cam, GoPro, and Olympus. Is it worth carrying this heavy thing? Because it's pretty heavy. If I had that 12 mil Tony 2, it's a lot lighter. I can't imagine buying it though, already having the Leica. Tony 1.4, give me a break. <laughs> so, we're done. Let me know your thoughts down below. Affiliate links everywhere. Subscribe for more videos and we'll see you in the next one. Here's a prime example of my life. I was in program mode, apparently. Even though it's set to aperture priority, I can clearly see the P. And now we have some blurry background. I probably recorded that whole thing at like F90. The whole comparison. I'm gonna have to do that again. Ah.